have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show, episode 209. I am your man behind the microphone and your current reigning Scholars of Wrestling champion, Scholar Jeff. And to my right is my cohort in crime, Scholar Tarek. What's up, sir? Oh, no, 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 no. If you're gonna be now, if you're gonna be introducing me, introduce me right. Yes, you are not. You are still currently the Scholars of Wrestling champion, but you, that you is know. not. That is nothing, in compared to what I am, and that is your former Scholars of Wrestling champion, your former uh, Scholar of the Year award winner, uh, former Royal Rumble game winner, and f- currently. Your Mr. Scholar in the Bank. So, with all, all of these accomplishments under my belt, you can now officially call me the Undisputed Scholar Tark. It can't be under your belt because right now you don't have one. Um, well, yeah, I do have a belt, but yes, it's not currently this. The, but it's not the only belt that matters. Okay, we get what you mean. We get what you mean. But anyway, welcome to this episode of the Scholars of Wrestling show. No, wait, wait. As I said, call me as I should be called. Okay, you're right. You're right. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who I t- completely demolished in order to get this lovely title, Scholar Tarek. I think one point on two occasions did not count as demolishing. Hey. It was still not a. It was nil, not a draw. It was. It was a very decisive victory. It was decisive, not very decisive, and it wasn't demolishing. One match, one match. It may have been what it need to give you that title, but it was still one match. It wasn't a decisive victory. It wasn't a dominating victory, but it was decisive. Besides, you're missing the big point of all this. Trolling you was fun. Okay, well, since. You're obviously not. Hello, everyone. I am the undisputed scholar Tarek. I'm disputing it right now. Oh, so I got the belt. Oh, you're one. You're one single title reign compared to everything that I have done on this show already. If you're not first, you're last, baby. Oh, trust me. I'm first on everything on what you just said. I am the first ever scholars of wrestling champion. I am the first of you and of the three of us. You me and Brian, to w- actually win a Royal Rumble game, which I'm still going to point out, neither of you two won yet. And I am Mr. Scholar in the Bank, and I am also Scholar of the Year for the Scollies. So your one title reign is just just a little shadow to what I have with, in the grand stage of Scholars of Wrestling. I am st- the best. I am the scholar that you and Brian are trying to get on my level. I am the scholar that you are trying to be. You are inspiring to be. I am the undisputed scholar. I am the best. Then why have I gotten under your skin so much? Because I just love hearing the sound of my voice at all my accomplishments. And I you know you are you trying do, your damnedest. You, you bet I know you you're do. trying your damnedest. You bet you do. Oh, trust me. As much as you're trolling me, I'm trolling you. You may not. You may not The 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 slow red in your cheeks are saying <laughs> otherwise, because you you know the truth that your one little accomplishment is nothing compared to the list, the list of scholar Tarek, if you will. I'm sorry. What were you saying? I'll tell you what I'm saying. It, we need to kick this show off right. We can throw banter back and forth. It's what we're very no, we good throw at. Truth. We know this. We can throw truth back and forth. Oh. Because that's what pretty much you and I have been saying. Well, what truth, banter, whatever. Same there thing. is one bit of truth that we absolutely need to get to. And that's the same bit of truth we always drop on every single show if we can. The way we like to do it in a little segment we like to call Backstage News. Indeed. We start the show as we always start our shows by peeking behind these curtains and checking in on a little backstage no Brian? No. Brian? No. Brian? Mm. Why aren't you here, Brian? Why aren't you here? No. 
course that's yeah. how of course that's how he answers yes <laughs> brian is reporting to us from the great beyond i guess the aliens he's on assignment aka with the aliens but either way we have plenty of to talk about in the world of wrestling this week both the serious the entertaining and the just plain bizarre which is where we're going right now with apparently uh my boy shinsuke nakamura got bitten by a security dog before smackdown i think it's safe to say that i know i didn't see this one coming I believe it was actually at a SmackDown house show Monday night, pretty much taking place at the same time as Raw. Mm. And at that event, he wasn't cleared to wrestle. And then when it came to SmackDown the next day, he he still wasn't cleared. Apparently, that was one bad dog. And everyone is thinking, oh, it has to have been Roman Reigns because it was a big dog. Um, and then I just waka waka. waka waka no you want to add waka waka how about this one it turns out that it, just being a big dog is uh, Roman Reigns' Animorph what did you <laughs> seriously just drop an Animorphs reference in 2018 <laughs> you damn right I did I how for all the years we've known each other you think I just couldn't get any more random and I just happened to throw one right at you out of nowhere okay I want you to savor this moment because I'm going to probably give you the most credit I'm ever going to give you on an episode of Scholars of Wrestling. Bravo. Bravo. Oh, you know, yeah. Soak it in. Yeah, of course. Of course Save I'm the soaking flavor it in because, because it's not going to happen again, buddy. It's just so natural when it comes to me. I instantly regret my decision. <laughs> just like I'm sure Well, you can't take it back uh, now. Oh, I'll, I'll, get it, I'll get it back somehow. But anyway... One thing that Nakamura is going to have to get back first is apparently the working use of his leg after that dog bit him. Like, so wow. like, did it was it bad enough that he required stitches, or is it just we don't know yet? Mm. But it That's seemed, really, but it seemed to be in more than enough to take him out of action for at least that one week. I'll, I guess I'll say more about this on when we talk about SmackDown Live because there is something really to bring that up. Very true. But it it real it really sucked. What happened? And it it really... I was really looking forward to the match that he was going to have with Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. Yeah. But, again, we're going to talk about that when we talk about yeah, SmackDown Yeah, I think we all Live. were, but you're right. We'll get to that. In the meantime, let's finish up this segment with a little bit of good news. Because apparently, Kevin Owens achieved a lifelong dream of meeting and being serenaded by Shania Twain. I had no idea that he was a Shania Twain fan, but you know what? I respect them all the more for it. I really do. I actually just read about this this morning. And I just saw the post that his wife posted on her Instagram. Of just like the videos of him trying to get on stage and all that. And I actually didn't see it. I just saw pictures of him holding signs and just attending the concert. I still actually have to watch the video. I did maybe a matter of hours before we started recording the show. It's it's a genuine feel-good moment. They're like, oh. This is actually really cool. This like big bad Kevin Owens is now getting so excited about meeting Shania Twain, which you know, not to mention Shania Twain's still a damn good looking woman. But not for nothing, just seeing pictures of his wife, of Kevin Owens' wife, I'm like, this this guy, this guy. Good for him. Yeah, he, <laughs> he does well for himself. Good on you, Kev. Still, it's, it's well, one of those it was a lifelong silly... dream when I met him, so he had fulfilled his own lifelong dream of meeting someone he wanted to meet. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's so human, but still so much fun to see actually happen. It's, mm -hmm. it's just fun. Just plain damn fun. And that's the way the world of wrestling should be sometimes. That's the way the world should be, period. Yes, just plain damn fun. No fighting over petty things like records or achievements or... Who is you know the best in the room or trying to do anything? Or who should be the cha or who is the champion? You, yeah, I mean, yeah. Come on, I mean, we don't need to do things like that. I mean, oh, come on. Only assholes do that. Yeah, I, only complete and total pricks would try and do something so silly as that. I well, mean, we wouldn't know anybody like no, that. No, 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 no. Right, Jeff? No, of course not, Tark. Anyway, moving on. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we do have the rest of this week in wrestling to deal with. And to respond to and analyze, 
So let's kick things off the right way with a little segment we like to call us talking about Monday Night Raw. Segways. I, I I guess with you doing segways like that, we actually do need to come up with a title for when we talk about Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, I can I can see it now. The segment where we talk about Raw and no, no. respond to it you know in what? an awful manner. You know what? We do have something about this. The whole segment is called Raw versus SmackDown Live. Now we move on to Raw, the Raw portion of Raw versus SmackDown Live. You're you welcome. Say, you have to say the whole thing. Damn right I do. But anyway, first match we had on the card, we had the revival in a return match to finally defeating Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley. My first thought when I saw this match was, in my opinion, this is the way it should have gone right from the start. Well, not really a return match. It's just a copy repeat from last week. But the difference is that the revival got the one up on Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley, leading from the Roman Reigns trying to one up Bobby Lashley, what he did last week by forcing himself, forcing himself to tag him, uh, tag himself in. Uh, they're it's like, oh, you think you can, you can do what you did last week? I, well, I can do it better. And then he ends up getting rolled up. Yeah, I, I definitely see what they were going for. It's This is more of a nitpick in my opinion. And as someone who really likes the revival and wants to see them do well. Will it actually do anything for them? And that's the thing. For the revival or Rome? Actually, yeah, it will. It'll, it'll be a, a win over Roman and Bobby Lashley, two big guys who, especially given the the record that they've got right now in the revival, I mean, they really need some sort of oomph to get their relevance back. Because right now, they're not doing so hot. And they really could benefit from the momentum sooner, I feel. Well, starting from the opening segment with Kurt Angle coming co- and Constable Corbin, we have to add him in as well because he, ma- he made sure... He was he was included in it. You know what? Yeah, I act to be perfectly honest. I'm actually digging Baron Corbin right now. Okay. He's actually doing something. When he was still his lone wolf character after the uh, superstar shakeup, he had nothing to do except maybe take down No Way Jose and stop stupid things. But now they're taking the stupid things and now making him the vo- pretty much the voice of Stephanie McMahon while she's away. And now he has a new look. He's pretty much like a corporate guy. He's actually point. He actually is pointing out the stupid shit. He actually is. He actually has life back in his character. True enough. So now I'm invested in him. I'm actually intrigued with this. This is actually a good step for him. But back to the segment. Kurt Angle, on the other hand, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Kurt Angle hasn't been doing well mm. as a. As a authority figure in the last in the last uh, few shows, he just seems kind of going through the motions. But back to the storyline aspect, it turns out this whole ordeal with Brock Lesnar choosing not to defend his title at SummerSlam. Uh, so the mul- the multi man match that was supposed to happen at Extreme Rules has now been canceled temporarily, and that led to. Well, Roman Reigns coming out at first, Bobby Lashley coming out to hear this whole announcement, them going at each other, putting some truth with both of them about how Bobby Lashley left uh, 10 years ago and how the reason Brock Lesnar, for Bobby Lashley's sake, the reason Brock Lesnar is choosing not to come back is because every time he does come back, he has to face Roman again. He doesn't want to face Roman again. Nobody wants to see them him face Roman again. And I'm like, wow. This is quite possibly the most I've gotten out of we gotten out of Bobby Lashley since his comeback. He still needs some work on the on his execution, but what he was saying on the promo, yeah, I was I was I was digging them. I was digging what actually both of them were saying. It's just still the fact that Roman Reigns is thinking is pretty much going around acting like a four year old girl saying, oh. I should be the ch- I'm the champion. I should be the champion. Brock, Le- I I technically beat Brock Lesnar. I want my title. Yeah, it's it, this really did fall flat for me just because I really don't have any 
preset emotional investment in either one of these characters. Mm-hmm. I will admit that, again, the facts were in the right place, but again, the delivery was lacking, which really didn't sell me. It's a step in the right direction, I'll grant you that, but for me personally, it's, you know, I still need to see more in and then, order to get really invested in this. And then the revival came out saying they want to take their opportunity, take take an opportunity again, and with how their match ended, their match ended up, they got their uh, they got their opportunity. They won, and as I said earlier, I hope this ooh, excuse me, I hope this actually gives them something. This is a lead to the right direction and basically reviving the revival. Mm-hmm, absolutely. In the meantime, that's not the only tag match we had on, on Monday Night Raw this week. We had a tag match featuring my boy, Braun Strowman. He's my boy, too. Just because you got, my boy, just because you got the prediction doesn't mean he's not my boy, too. I love Braun. This my th- avatar of complete and utter destruction, Braun Strowman. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, so, yes. Oh, and I think there's some other guys in this, too, yeah. What I... With, uh, okay, with you kind of blowing the whole thing, the rest of the guys off, shame on you for that. You get, uh, you get, it starts off with the backstage segment with Kurt Angle and Baron Corbin. Who comes in, but big old smile himself, Finn Balor comes in. (laughs) Big old smile himself. Come on, he enters, he enters now. I get it, you're not wrong, it's... (laughs) That's that's what I'm gonna it's call him. Big old smile himself. Oh boy, I miss the demon. I, um, <laughs> I do too. But for the sake of my own personal amusement, I hope that becomes a thing on this show. Anyway, continue. He, I don't even remember. Oh, he he voices his frustrations about the multi man match getting canceled. Baron Corbin throws a throws a jab at him, saying, uh, "Like you had a chance since you could I you couldn't even beat me last week." And then, of course, Braun Stro- our man, Bra- our man, Braun Strowman decides to come on in. He's like, you know what? I feel kind of bad. I feel bad. Kevin Owens tried to give me a hand of friendship last week, and I just blew him off. I feel bad about that. So I'm gonna give Kevin Owens a chance this week. I want to be him. I want him, me and him, to be in a tag team match together. Kurt's like, well, who do you want as your who do you want as your opponents? These two pointing at Finn Balor and Baron Corbin. Okay, we got it. We got us a tag team match. And it's a very unique tag team match because when was the last time we really had a face and a heel versing a face and a heel? Hmm. I know that there's been mismatches in the past that I can think of, but in this that this particular setup, this was this was relatively new. And when it came to the match itself, my God, that this match was so much fun. Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman work wonders together. I like the whole bit with uh, uh, Braun tag uh, had both Finn Balor and Baron Corbin in opposite corners. He tagged Kevin Owens in, and he's like, "Here, you go. You get that guy. I get this guy." And one does a uh, Kevin Owens does the that. cannonball, and Braun does his Bruh! his throwing Braun. <laughs> throwing brawn at throwing brawn at whoever I think it was Baron Corbin and it was just great it was just really great storytelling and uh, Braun telling Kevin Owens to do the runaway train on Finn Balor and Baron Corbin he takes down Finn Balor but then t- eats a clothesline from Baron Corbin <laughs> and then when you have those two guys actually working beautifully together and the crowd is eating it up this was a fun match. You had Baron Corbin and Finn Balor being the complete opposite, where they're trying to one up each other, and they ended up just not getting along at all, ending it up in a ending up in a countout. Which, in the end, it doesn't hurt any of these guys. Yes, it was a mm-hmm. countout, but it was actually a good. It was a good countout because you had two guys who couldn't stand each other, not standing each other, and ending up beating the ever loving shit out of each other. Mm-hmm. And Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman both counting the ten. They win. Kevin Owens is just going, yeah, yeah, you're the man. You're the man, Braun. Yeah, yeah. And he offers his hand of friendship. And then you see the look on Braun Strowman's face. Yeah, he's not having it. Kevin Owens comes to the realization, okay, I think this was a one-time deal. I'm getting the hell out of Dodge. (laughs) And it leads to more Braun shenanigans. 
You mean Brawnanigans. Brawnanigans. Oh, I like that. Brawnanigans. First kind of a Scooby-Doo reference of Kevin Owens running from Braun Strowman, hiding in a locker hiding in the locker room. Braun comes in as some stupid concession guy. Where's Kevin Owens? Who's that? He's a guy that looks like he has a beat a bowling ball in his under his shirt. Boo, Braun. That wasn't that wasn't nice. And then he just wa- and then he just walks past the locker room. And then Kevin Owens gets a couple of security guards, gets his shit together, tries to bail, goes to the valet to pick up his rented car. Give me my, give me the keys to my car. Give me the keys to my car. Oh, I don't have the keys to your car. Wait, what? What do you mean you don't have the keys to my car? He has it. And then you just turn and you just see Braun dangling the keys and then tosses it to KO. It's like, oh, here you go. Here's your key. But it's too bad it won't help you in the end after what I did to your car. And then Kevin Owens turns around and just sees the car. Uh, Kevin Owens rent a car, flipped. flipped on its back, and smoke coming out of it. You see a couple of random guys coming in with a fire extinguisher to try and put it out. Oh, man. this Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman is just so much fun. They work awesome together. Mm. Yeah, I definitely want to see this actually balloon into a legitimate feud of assuming heaven forbid the whole money in the bank thing doesn't work out for them or if at least if they're buying time for that until then there's lots you can do with these two right right now the the i just don't want to rush it the big rumor going around is for extreme rules they're going to fight each other in a steel cage hmm interesting interesting well another thing that i do find interesting for once in in a long time is the Bailey versus Sasha Banks feud specifically about what happened this past week on Raw and Bailey basically went Super Saiyan. What I what's so weird about this is the fact that Kurt Angle is trying to insert trying to insert power. You guys gotta you guys gotta make up. He first he so it was shown talking to Sasha Banks, but we're not hearing what they're saying. You just see Sasha going, "Oh, you gotta be kidding me!" type deal. And then he t- goes to talk to Bailey. He's like, I want you two and Ember Moon to finally put an end to this whole thing you guys are having with the Riot Squad. Put your differences aside. Uh, finally overcome the Riot Squad. And Bailey's like, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that's stupid. And Kurt's like, no, you're doing it anyway. Thank you, Kurt. Your, your knowledge, your wisdom is just working wonders for you right now and then that leads to this to the six women tag including a quick cameo by uh jinder mahal okay mr positivity um the match itself was was pretty good it was actually good of course ember moon steals the show yeah we like ember we we do like ember moon hi ember if you're actually watching us, hi. Um, yeah, and it just leads to Sasha getting pinned again, and then immediately after the match ends, Bailey go as you put it, goes Super Saiyan, and just completely destroys you Sasha. Ain't shit, Sasha! Like w- l- to the praise of the crowd, the crowd is eating this up. They're finally chanting for Bailey. We're finally actually getting something. From this god awful feud, hopefully now it actually starts actually getting interesting, which it has. Well, yeah, now for it's, me, I mean, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we actually continue on, but now leads to you ain't shit, Sasha. Uh, and Someone then, actually made that shirt, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. I, <laughs> I, hope, I, I hope she wears it. <laughs> just, There's no way. Not not on not on TV, but just in general. Um, and then it just leads to Kurt Angle coming. Now you need you need some anger angerman counseling, which I even posted on my Twitter, retweeting from what doc from the one and only Doctor Shelby. I if he doesn't come back if he doesn't come back next week, I'm going to be legit pissed. I'm already legit pissed because they didn't accept my request to uh, volunteer and do it for free. I would be happy to. Be uh be their anger management counselor, and then they see your, they see your they see your comment. And they're just like, who the hell is this guy? Someone who's willing to do it for free. Can't argue with the price, buddy. 
you still have Dr. Shelby, who is, no offense, way more entertaining than you. Yeah, well, I'm actually trained to do the job, so there. And Dr. Shelby is not? No, he's an actor. No, you don't know? He's Dr. Shelby! He's not an actor, he's a doctor. Shelby. He's a doctor of Shelby. Okay. But anyway, I'm sure whatever we get out of this is going to be entertaining. If, if Dr. Be Shelby is if actually he, if involved. He, if he shows up. If he doesn't, then... I want them. I want them to basically try and do what they did with, uh, with Kane and Daniel Bryan. It should have been May. Instead of, uh, I hope they don't. They don't treat it seriously. It ha it has to be for fun. That's the only way that w people will actually be invested mm. in it. Well, we're gonna have to see how it all turns out. But in the meantime, right here and now, we did also get a very good match between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. Not just a good match, a great match with. Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. Of course, it's for the Intercontinental Championship. You wouldn't expect anything less for such a prestigious title. Um, but yeah, it was even great storytelling with uh, Drew getting involved. He ends up getting himself ejected. The The match was just f phenomenal. Uh, great spots. The DDT on the apron looked like it hurt a lot. Um, and then it just... All leads up to uh, Seth Rollins hitting the superplex to the Falcon Arrow. And it just leads to Drew McIntyre coming back, pulling the referee, and just leading it to a disqualification. And you see, you're see, you seeing the epic beatdown that is going on with uh, Drew and Dolph taking down Seth Rollins. You're expecting to hear a certain... But no... They actually kind of killed the mood for the big dog. The big dog, of course, and then takes Ziggler out like a bitch, which actually kind of pissed me off. And then, and then he does a five-second beatdown on Drew McIntyre and made Drew McIntyre look like a bitch. Cut, cause. Who knows? Cause, cause you know you can't make Roman Reigns look bad, even though they tried to. They tried to do it early in the night, but no, we have to have the show end on Roman Reigns. Mm. Uh, I have to do it. Old habits die hard. Here's my one. Fuck that. Mm. Mm -mm. I that that actually really hurt. Hurt the hurt the whole uh, last half hour, and the fact that they gave him a half hour was even more something to applaud on. Yeah, sometimes they just plain get it right. I mean, they put out so much programming, they kind of have to eventually. Oh, we have a great segment? Let's throw Roman Reigns. He is literally the Poochie of WWE. I hate you. I hate it. Roman Reigns should also be louder and have access to a time machine. But anyway, that's WWE for you. Nothing least, is ever perfect. At least that's WWE Raw for you. Yes. So anyway, let's check on the other side of the tracks and check out SmackDown, see what's going on there. And right out of the gate, we get Rusev beating my one another one of my boys, Xavier Woods. Man who has held this belt. Can't let that, can't let that go because While it's a big deal. While well, looking constipated and Kofi looking confused as hell and Big E having the biggest damn smile. That's his um, default setting, so to me that doesn't count. It was, yes, it was the opening match. It was a great opening match. And what I loved about this is that it was, it was there was more layers to this match than we really that we really saw. It was a great transition from Rusev being the uh, comedy act to actually a legit contender for the WWE Championship while still like they still have the comedy in there, but it's the slow transition from comedy to legit contender. He went from it's Rusev Day to it's Rusev Day Mother Hubbard. How he put it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all and, in the delivery. And that last maybe. and that the promo after the match, amazing. Like I I'm really looking forward to this match. Oh he, yeah. Will he win the title? Probably not, but He'll look damn good. He'll look damn good it. trying for it. Mm -hmm. What did you what was your thoughts on Big E throwing the uh the comic bubble with the word ouch honestly 
I don't know if it's just the way my where my focus is, and I'm just looking to get something out of someone, someone or something new. But I've been way into everything the New Day has been doing lately. Even drinking a pancake milkshake. Yes, <laughs> even that. It's intriguing. It look Woods looked like he wasn't enjoying it, but I'm I'm kind of intrigued. I would do it. Drink a pancake milkshake. Honestly, from uh, from Bootyworth. Sure. Honestly. <laughs> I'm com- I am entirely biased. I uh, not only do I love video games, I'm also way big in the fighting games and wrestling. So really, and pancakes. To to me, yeah, and pancakes. So really, to me, Xavier Woods is my boy. I, you know, he's batting a thousand. He can do no wrong in my eyes. So it made him look. The match made him look great. Yeah. That like, this match was just perfect. I still want to play him in Mortal Kombat one day, but. There you go. Challenge made. Yes. I want I want to face you in Mortal Kombat or really any fighting game at all, Xavier. I can beat you. I know I can. You're I good, see, but I I'm just I see a Street Fighter. I don't know why. Well, maybe one of these days. I, he does show up at every CEO, so... And plus my fiancé has been talking about taking a vacation to Florida one year, so... It maybe could one happen. day it could happen. It could maybe. happen. Or that, or me facing Kenny Omega, which Kenny, I'm not so. Would be just as great. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm pretty sure Kenny Omega could destroy me, but. Whatever. But you still would fight. You would still have a, a match with Kenny Omega. True. Let just True. let him beat the shit. <laughs> let him destroy you. Hell no! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going. <laughs> let's put it this way, with with Xavier Woods, I'm pretty sure I can beat him. With Kenny Omega, I would have to legitimately try. How about that? <laughs> I've oh, seen these guys play together I enough. Why, I know their I know their skills. Just take, I know I, just take this that one clip of you saying that, just post it on his on Xavier Woods Twitter and just see how he responds to it. Maybe. Maybe. But anyway, we have yet another tag match to discuss. We got Jeff Hardy and the Usos going over Sanity, which Eric Young and Sanity had to fill in to Philip Nakamura's Injury. This. What's your reaction to this one? This was a disaster. Really? This is actually the only. This is really the only bad thing that I actually have to say on SmackDown. Really? Because it, on paper, it actually was a good idea. First, you start with because Nakamura got bitten by Anamorph Roman, uh, he had to be taken out. So now it became an open challenge. Uh, that's fine. Eric Young is the one that answers. That's awesome. Let it. Let's go, and the mat the the U.S. title match itself, it wasn't that great of a match. And these two guys have history together in TNA and all that, so I guess it just wasn't their night. It just did their match wasn't that great. It was very sloppy, and that twist of fate botch. My God, did that look bad? Mm. But. And then it just led to a disqualification, which led to the Usos coming out. Oh, no, 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 not led to the Usos. It led, uh, the match led the Usos coming out, which led to the disqualification, which made, which allowed Paige to pull a Teddy Long, holla, holla, and make it a six-man tag. And they, and the Usos and Jeff Hardy beat Sanity clean. In their first real, in their first real match Mm. on the main roster, after... An eleven-week build since their call-up from NXT. When it came, when it comes to sanity, my God, did this hurt them? Yeah, they're not. It, it, they're not looking good. This was not good for them. As excited as I was to just turn on SmackDown this week and just say, "Wait a minute, is Jeff Hardy fighting Eric Young?" I'm like, "Okay, you're this thinking is cool. that's that's a great thing." But now it's like. They're treating it like an afterthought, which, you know, given Nakamura's absence, it kind of was in a way. Even so, don't make it to the point where, if anything, yeah, the disqualification, sure, we can ha- we can handle that. But when it came to the six-man tag, what would Jeff Hardy and the Usos lose if they lost the match? Absolutely mm. nothing. Sanity are the new guys. Most of the most of the casual audience doesn't know who Sanity is. So when you're co- being called up from NXT and you're being booked as such a big deal, at least 
At least that's how it was when the first in, a, uh, in the first couple of weeks, and then the promos were gone, and then they just show up one week on SmackDown last week. <sighs> this this match hurt them. Mm. Even if even if uh, they would have done something dirty, and it and it just have another be another disqualification that Sanity was getting too ru- was being too rough, uncontrollable. Instead, you're just making them look like nothing. Look like nothing. Mm. They look completely, completely pointless. They have to do something huge for them to gain any form of momentum back. Cause this, this hurts. This hurts them a lot. Yeah, I don't have much, too much more to say other than that. I'm, you're, you're completely spot on there. This, I want to like these guys. I want more people to get involved, invested in these guys. Same thing with the authors of Pain, but I'm, I'm not gonna get into that too much. Just give us something to chew on. We want to like these guys. Yeah. These guys are great. You have the yeah. You brought up the authors of pain. We have sanity. We have uh, Andreas Cien Almas, who uh, I completely forgot was on the roster. By the way, who you, yeah, because when he first showed up, he only was in two squash matches against local talent. It looks like they were going to start something with Sin Cara. Out the door, mm. and then you just have one random promo. Yeah. When it came to the NXT call ups this year. My God, this is not good. Yeah, they're dropping all kinds of balls all over the place. Yeah, oh, and yeah, no way, Jose. It was nothing more than a glorified jobber. Yeah, him and his and his cheeseburger man, Todd. Todd. Did he look like Spoonie to you? I'm sorry. I'm going to I, go blow, I, go back I, and look at that. When I watched I don't know. when I watched that segment, I thought, my God, he looked just like Spoonie. I'm gonna have to. But go yeah, back we'll, and we'll look at that one later. But yeah. In the meantime, we got. Probably the greatest ep- segment of the entire evening. James Ellsworth calls out Asuka. At least there was no Carmella. I'm at, this is actually, I actually enjoyed this. I'm, it's so weird to say, I'm slowly warming up to James Ellsworth. Shocking, I know. I'm, I'm even who surprised. Who the hell are my, you? I'm surprised. I'm the undisputed scholar. That's who the hell I am. I'm oh, surprised. Oh no, you're my... plenty disputed. No, As we previously, I'm the, un- the undisputed and scholar in the bank. Yes, but not the undisputed the... scholar in the mm. bank. The undisputed scholar. Period. But back to what I, I was know, saying. Back pre- to what I was saying before. Disputed, back Cole. to what I was saying before. I'm actually warming up to James Ellsworth. If he continues on with what he's doing now. Go for it. And I even like that. Pay- he like he ripped off his shirt. Look. He's like, come on, Asuka. He's pretty much, yeah, He, they're slowly bringing in that whole, like, the Andy Kaufman thing that he was pulling on the indies when he was away during his time outside WWE. And I like, Paige comes out and just like, what are you doing? Oh, you want to, oh, you want to have a date next week? Well, fine. Oh, yeah, fine. Uh, I will definitely have a date with you. Oh, no, it's not with me. And it's not really a date. It's a match with Asuka next week. And I am really looking forward to that. So am I. You know there's going to be shenanigans. The one that really hurt is me is just the delivery of of Paige just to like transition this whole thing. Well, to be fair, both of them are not that great promos. Yeah, uh, like I like them both, but there was just this just came across as exceedingly clunky. Like it. I like. You still got to the match, the announcement they were going for. It was just like I like not the I like, everyone's best work. I'm kind of liking the the feminist troll that he's try, that James Ellsworth is trying to pull off. But oh. yeah, it's just the execution on the mic. Both yeah, both pa- him and Paige are not exactly the best on the mic. Mm. But mm-hmm. it was it was still fun. Yeah. But in the meantime, let's finally, for once and for all, get to the big big news from this week. Team Hell No has finally returned and will be facing the tag champs, the Bludgeon Brothers, at Extreme Rules. This was great. Completely caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. First, you have first. This was actually the opening segment of Raw with Miz inter, uh, pulling a Miz TV to talk to Har- uh, Harper and Rowan. Almost said their full names, but they, it's just Harper and Rowan now. Got to get used to that. Redcons. Um, right. And I like that they were the they were the silent maniacal characters, and Miz was just narrating everything, offering them to be the new Miz Taraj, and they're just like, "Yeah, we're gonna just beat you up now." 
At least that's how, that, how they looked. They gave that I'm going to beat you up face. Daniel Bryan comes out showing how much of an awesome badass he is. So it's just going, so which one of you am I facing first? Harper accepts the challenge. And Harper and Daniel Bryan, man, they are, they are awesome. Mm. This was a great match. And I don't even, I don't even care if it was, a, it was a similar ending to the main event match on Raw, that in fact that it was a disqualification. Uh, victory but it's so funny when Harper and Rowan attacked Daniel Bryan last week I was really questioning myself like who are they gonna get as his tag team partner I mean Kane's a Kane's running for uh mayor in uh what was it Knox County or yeah, he pretty much already got it I mean it's, he, again it's a yellow state it, yellow, red state what where did I get yellow from I don't know red I actually state have no idea probably because I'm seeing your Scholar in the bank briefcase out of the corner of my eyes. That's probably why I'm getting a ball. It's a yellow. it's a hunting sight for you, isn't it? No, not really. I'm just hold on. Let me f- correct this. Red. Okay, I'm good. Anyway, red state. He's very much already got this locked so, down. He's not concerned. So the fact that he like that so he actually had just time. Like, okay, I've got fun. I've I got, got some, some time. I got some time. So I will say the 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 sad thing is. It's not the same when he showed up without a pro, without a pyro. I can see that. It, as awesome as just you, you hear you hear it on the speakers, but it's it's not the same as a uh, seeing the flaming pyro come in and then got more of a great crowd reaction. Mm-hmm. But Kane shows up, takes down Har- uh, Harper and Rowan. You don't know what he's going to do at first because remember the last time we saw Kane and Daniel Bryan together. Kane choke slammed him around Survivor Series because remember Kane was a raw guy and Daniel Bryan was uh, trying to talk to Kurt Angle for uh, on behalf of SmackDown after the whole SmackDown invasion, and then Kane choke slams him. So yeah, we don't know what to expect from this, and of course, Kane opens his arm, hug it out, hug it out, hug it out, hug it out. Hug it out. Hug, Hug it, it out. out. Ah! And the crowd went absolutely nuts. This has been, hopefully, a Dr. Shelby week. At least that's I how really we're getting I hope so. It. And Dr. Shelby would be so proud of them. Or he probably still, he, he currently is if he watched that segment. But my, it, now and Paige comes out, oh, I'm definitely taking uh, opportunity with this one. So at Extreme Rules, Team Hell No will take on the Bludgeon Brothers for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. It may just be I a, dig it. It may just be a one-off thing for Kane, but I'm sure as hell invested. Yes. Or, sh- yeah, should they be now known as Team Hell Yes? Since the no thing is kind of gone, is kind of gone since he's now... It's what they know. Yes, it's man. What yes, known man. As. Yes, man. But it, I think it's still fun to say, just hell no. Now I want to take the poster of yes, the Jim Carrey Yes Man and just have Daniel Bryan and Kane. <laughs> I, I feel like someone's already done that. It's, it's got to be somewhere on the internet. Yeah, I got to look it up. Yeah. But if not, I'll do it. Yeah. And it'll just be one of those horribly cut paste that, like, similar to what we did when we had our, uh, one of the Fettuccini's poster from Ghostbusters yes. 2. <laughs> El Dandy and, and El Sandow. Dandy. <laughs> oh, boy. Gotta love it. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Which they are, are kind of now a nostalgia act. Mm, guess technically five, five, five years w- a, wow for WWE that's like it's 20. like a million it's like 20 <laughs> but anyway that was this week in wrestling now is when we're bringing it back to Raw versus Smackdown Live which one was the better show in your opinion champion goes first yeah that's right I'm I'm giving it to oh, you oh, oh now I'm the champion okay oh, I never denied that you were the champion I'm just saying your one single title reign means nothing compared to my to my You're accomplishments. Up your one single title reign. My one single title reign. My one all this current undisputed briefcase. talk, and now suddenly my one, I'm my, the one okay. my okay. one my one scholar is. in the bank. My one scholar of the scholar of the year, Scully. My one Royal Rumble game win. Can I finish? Can I actually give you my verdict? You didn't even as... start, so I will let you begin. Okay, ass hole. I am going to say that, honestly, I thought Raw was the better show this week. Normally, SmackDown sort of eclipses it, but Raw, for all its faults, 
it had a lot more good points this week that really got kept me invested and got me invested and kept me there. SmackDown had its moments. It it had certainly like we were talking about Team Hell No, which was great, but Raw delivered in my opinion, a little bit more than SmackDown did. I got more enjoyment out of it. So this week, Raw wins for me. Now you may respond. Well, I guess I'm going to continue that eclipse because I'm going to go with uh, SmackDown Live on this one. Hmm. Ooh, excuse me. Um, when, I came, when it really came down to it, Raw definitely did have great moments. The tag team match, the Intercontinental Championship match before the ending. Um... And Bailey finally snapping, hopefully getting this rivalry with Sasha going. But when it came to the op- the opening segment, when it came to Mojo Rawley versus No Way Jose proving that No Way Jose is nothing more than a waste of time, uh, there were there were definitely a lot more time. There were a lot more just time filler that came on Raw. When it for SmackDown, everything felt like it needed to be there. It was. Minus the uh, whole thing with Sanity, it was a near-perfect show for me. If if we had Nakamura had that United States Championship match, which I am convinced he was supposed to win the title hmm. to gain momentum back from his whole thing with AJ Styles. they Because he's still the one of the biggest things that's going on. And Jeff Hardy being United States Champion isn't doing isn't really doing anything. It's not, not Jeff Hardy isn't really benefiting from being United States champion, which granted it's the United States championship, but if they're trying to make this the equivalent of the Intercontinental Championship, yeah, bullshit. Uh they got to do something with it and I feel like Nakamura can actually put the United States Championship in that position, which I actually think now the, this was just time the sanity thing was just time waste so when Nakamura is healed up, he can win the US title. Yeah. So, Elevating mid-card titles is kind of what he's known for in the mm-hmm. modern day. So when it comes to, minus that, minus the whole sanity fiasco, SmackDown was near perfect. And it, the show ended on a high note for me with the return of Team Hell No. When you look at Raw, how that ended, it was the complete opposite with, well, you're expecting a Dean Ambrose return to get a huge pop. Instead, yeah, we'll just, we'll just waste our Intercontinental Championship just to continue getting Roman, Roman Reigns over. Mm. Yeah, that didn't... That that hurt it a lot for me. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to go with SmackDown Live. I can see that. And with that, I can't think of any better segue into the big question that we're going to now turn to you, our listening audience. Which one did you think was better? Do you think Raw was better, or do you think SmackDown just delivered again, as it has a tendency to do? Let us know what you think. Leave us comments or give us your feedback all across the internet. If you're watching us on Facebook right now, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that fun stuff that every other channel on YouTube always tells you to do. If you're checking us out on Facebook, uh, again, like our page, run a search for us at the Scholars of Wrestling Show. Or if you want to join in on the conversation yourself in a more direct way, you can also check us out at our Twitter machine, starting with our main account, at ScholarsOW. Or you can also get in touch with us directly and join us, join in the conversation with us on a more personal level. Fool, where can he reach you? You can reach me at The Avataric. And you reach Scholar Brian at Atomic Beanpole. Hey, we got to get in the contact with him somehow. Hopefully the, al- the aliens will receive the Twitter messages. But in the meantime, if you can't reach him, you can still reach me at I'm Robbie Rage. Join the conversation. Give us your feedback. We'd love to hear what you think. But in the meantime, you already know who we are. We are the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're You're welcome. welcome. See you all next week. And my title. (laughs) For now. You should put the title on Extreme Rules. Mm. Since you're so convinced of waiting for SummerSlam. Hey, if you really want the title to be on the line, cash that bad boy in. Put it on the oh, line. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't need, the, I don't need this to try and get a title match from you. Yeah, you do. I've got nothing to prove to you. Oh, you have a lot of proof. You have a lot to prove. No, you may I have don't. had one successful title defense, but that's not more than enough to be a true fighting champion. Why don't you just go ahead and just go ahead, put that title on the line, 
at Extreme Rules. No, fool. Come on. Don't be the fool, fool. Oh, no. You know you're what being you're the going fool to need to for do. For trying to cower out and not putting this belt on the line. No. I don't have to. I don't have anything to prove to you. If you want the title to be on the line, you know what you're going to have to do. Oh, try and get under your skin some more. That's what. That's all I'm going to do until we you get can't. to extreme rules. That's all I'm going to be doing, trying to get under you your already skin. Have, have you change your mind? I've developed an immunity. If anyone is going immunity. to trash talk me into putting this title on the line, guess what? It's not going to be you. Because you know who we are. We're the scholars of wrestling, and you have just been Isn't schooled. You're welcome. welcome. See you all next week. I'm out. Some, champ out. Bye. Some champ you are. Jesus Christ. Thank you.